Hey, hey guys, welcome back. Fred here at Math and Engineering. This video is going to be on trusses. So um, we have another video I'm going to put in the link below on how to solve a truss using the method of joints. That's where we went to each joint and we looked kind of at the sums of forces in Y and the sum of forces of X at each joint and we worked our way through the truss. Um, it's a long video because that's a long method. And in a very complicated kind of truss like this, which is actually a very common trick on the exam, um, if you don't know how to use the method of sections, you'll end up spending three hours trying to solve something like this. You have to find the reactions, and as you can see, and the question they're asking is to determine the forces down here at the end, right? Because it's, it punishes you for not understanding what the method of sections is. So what the method of sections allows us to do is it, it essentially what we're doing is we're just going to make a cut in the beam. I know like when I was um, first learning strength of materials and stuff, I was kind of confused by what they meant by cut, but well, what, what essentially it means is you're separating the, the truss into two sections. And wherever you cut, okay, the internal forces of the members that you cut are now no longer internal because they're no longer canceling each other out within the member. So the equilibrium conditions are no longer satisfied. So that's what we're going to do essentially. And we're going to use that to solve for members G, H, D, G, and C, D. So, um, and by the way, before we start, hit the like and subscribe button. Much appreciated, guys. So first of all, the trick here in the method of sections is to choose where to cut. So we're asked to find members G, H, D, G, and C, D. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of highlight those for you. So we have G, H, and I recommend you do this during the exam. Get a colored marker or something and just highlight the members that you want to cut. It gives you a little bit of visual representation of what it exactly is that you're doing. So now the idea is that we want to make one cut that kind of goes through all three of these so that we can expose them all and then we can find kind of a common point in which to, to analyze them. And as well, what we want to do is we want to analyze the side that doesn't have the reactions. Okay, because if we cut here, for example, we're going to make our cut here. Uh, if we take a look at we can just isolate the right side and solve for it independently and we can solve for each one of our forces. Okay? The left side is much more complicated there's, there's, we have to find the both reactions here. We're going to take the left away. I'm just going to solve for the right. So what I suggest, guys, is you draw a nice big picture. Okay, so wherever you cut, draw a big diagram. Okay, because you're going to have to draw little numbers and little arrows in there, and it can get confusing. So on the test, take the whole page, draw the biggest draw drawing that you want. All right, it's, uh, it's, it's actually quite important. So what we've done is we've cut here, okay? So I've taken the right side and we have 30 kip here, okay? We have our 15 kip here. And now we have 16, sorry, we have 12 feet here, 16 feet and 16 feet. So what I like to do is I like to draw arrows at the end of these forces, okay? And what we're going to do initially is we're just going to assume that these are all in tension, and we're going to solve, and if we get a negative, then we'll know it's in compression. And what you're going to do is just draw a dotted line and continue these arrows like this until they intersect, and this is going to be our point G. So our point G is still over here, okay? It's just um, the members have been cut before it, but it doesn't mean we can't still take the moment about G, which is going to help us. And this is point C. And I'd like to actually label these, so we have H, I, D, and this is F, G, H, F, G, D, and F, C, D. So very important to stay organized when you're doing this question, okay? Also, we may need to get the angle of this at some time, okay? So this is 12, this is 16, and this is 20 for the hypotenuse there. So I always suggest if you have an angular kind of a member here, just work out the, the triangle here on it so that you can use it to get the uh, forces if you need them. Okay, so the first step uh, in f determining our three member forces here is we're going to take the moment about somewhere, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take the moment about a point that leaves you only one unknown, okay? So what I mean by that is if, for example, I was going to go over here and take the point about H, none of the members that go through H are going to have any moment because they're going through the axis of the, mom the point in the moment, so there's no eccentricity. But if I take the moment about H, I have FGD, okay, and I have FCD. So I'm going to have two unknowns that I can't solve for. So what I want to do is select a point, and I can select G, even though kind of we don't have a member there, I can, I can take the moment about G, I can take it about C, I can take it about anywhere I want on the page. 
Okay, I want to take a point that the that two members intersect so that I can get isolate for the third unknown. So right now I'm taking a look at G. So I kind of want to take the moment about G. Okay, and as I can see, my two unknowns go through G. So these will uh, not have any moment uh, when I take the moment about G, but FCD will. So let's start with that. So let's take the moment about G and let's say that counterclockwise is positive. Sign convention is really important here, guys. Whatever you assume, just stick with it because I know the directions can be confusing and stuff. Okay, so let's take the moment about G. Okay, so FGH and FGD don't have any moment here. We do have a 30 kip force. Okay, that's acting uh, clockwise, so that's going to be negative. We have 30 times 16 feet. Okay, we have uh, 15 times 16 plus 16, and that's going to be negative again. Okay, and finally we have our FCD, which is also negative. I'm just going to bring it down here. So we have FCD, and that is going this way, okay, opposite of our sign convention, so it's negative. And FCD is times this moment arm here, so it's the vertical distance, which is 12 feet. Okay, and the mo some of the moments at any joint must equal zero. So, now that we have that, well, as you can see, we simply have one equation with one unknown. And now we can solve for FCD. Okay, so isolate for FCD here. Okay, so move these two to the other side. Okay, so we're going to have negative FCD times 12 is equal to, we have 480 plus 480. Okay, and that gives us an FCD value of dividing by negative 12, we're going to get that FCD is equal to negative 80 kip. Okay, So negative 80 kip tension is the same thing as 80 kip. So what does this mean? Well, what this means simply is that the direction that we assumed for FCD is incorrect. So if you ever get a negative value, okay, that means that this action member is not actually in tension. It's in compression. So there's two options that you can do here. And this is also uh, where a lot of people make mistakes. You can either revise your direction and, and continue with the correct direction. So now the arrow is going to be pointing inwards, denoting compression. Or you can keep the direction this way, but every time you use FCD, just use a negative value. So those are two options. Um, I like to revise it, so I'll just get my white out, and I'll just take my arrow away here. Okay. So now, I know now that the direction of FCD is correct. So I can use this direction now and not have to worry about including a negative. Let's go ahead and let's solve for our next force. So I'm once again, I'm going to take the moment about a place um, and isolate for one unknown. So now we know FCD, okay? We don't know FGD and we don't know FGH. So I'm taking a look at D now, okay? So if I take a moment at D, once again, I have two, well, I, this is a known now, but we have two unknowns. So I, I can go ahead and Take the moment here as well. There's lots of forces going through here, so my moment equation is going to be actually pretty small. So let's go ahead and take the moment about D. Okay, let's say that counterclockwise is positive. Okay, and what do we have? Well, we have this 30 kip, but that's going through the line of action, so there's no moment there. We do have this 15, which is 16 feet away. That's in the opposite direction. So we have 15 kip negative times 16. We have FGH here. FGH is actually in the positive direction and it's 12 feet away. And do we have any other forces? We don't. So this this, and this are the only forces that have any eccentricity at point D. And that is all equal to zero. So if we solve for FGH, okay, we're going to have 15 times 16 over 12. Okay, we're gonna get that FGH is equal to 20 kip tension. So as you can see this time, we got a positive value that means that the direction that we assumed for FGH is correct. This is this member is in tension. Let's go ahead and let's solve for the last unknown FGD. Now uh, that we have FGD, what we can do is uh, what we now that we have FGH and we have FCD, so we know all of the forces in the x direction or the y direction um, other than FGD. So we can select one of them and we can use that to solve. So let's try X. So let's take the sum of the forces in x. We'll say that right direction is positive. Okay, so what do we have in the x direction? Well, we have FCD, and, and you can choose x or y, but choose the easier one. Choose the one where we only have, for example, two, three forces or something like that. So we have, uh, let's take a look at our x direction. So we have FCD, 
FCD is 80 kip, that's to the right. Remember, we changed the arrow, so that's positive. We have FGH, that's in the negative direction. That's going to be minus 20. And we have FGD. FGD is in the left direction, that's going to be negative. But as you can see, FGD is on an angle. So we only want the x component of this vector here. So the way we do that is we simply take the x that we have our triangle here. So we're just going to multiply that by 16 over 20 equal to 0. And that's going to give us an FGD value, 75 kip. And the direction is correct. It is in tension. And that's pretty much it. So what did we do here? Well, we found the internal forces in FGH, FDG, and FCD. And uh, we did that by taking the moments about G, about D, and then we took the sum of the forces in X. And we made sure that we showed whether they were in tension or compression. Very, very important. Um, the things to take away from here, guys, watch your sign convention, make sure your positives and negatives are correct. And I like to edit the uh, directions if you find that they're different. So thank you guys for watching. Much appreciated. And as always, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and take care.